for Duncan. No, he did a juke. Mom, I totally yeah. juked in the face. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm ganked bot lane, mom, and I got a double kill. You know, when I lived with my mom, uh, I lived with my mom for a while. Yeah. Uh, and I did unironically do that shit. Like, I would be playing League, and so she'd be sitting there watching, like, Supernatural or something. And I'd gank bot lane and get him, and I'm like, oh my fucking god. And I'd turn around to her, and I'm like, you see that fucking shit? She can't see past me, because I'm hunched over my fucking computer monitor. You yeah. see that shit, mom? And she's just like, yeah, that was pretty good. And she's just not paying attention at all. Hello, and welcome to Gaming Together, Call to Podcast. I'm your host, Philip, and I'm here with my co-partner, Nave. Each pod, we play through a co-op experience, and then we're late to you, the listener, if this game is the creme de la creme of co-op, or something better off playing solo. Hey, Nave. We're not playing a game this week. No, we are back again with our Asshole Gamer series. I think this is number four, if I counted correctly. And if that number is wrong, then uh, this is number four again. Yeah, I don't know. You just said four, and I just believed you. I think I it did is. Not, I did not check. So this is our fourth round of just dealing with some asshole gamers. But before we get there, let's just check in with uh, what games we've been playing. You know, this is probably going to be a more relaxed episode. Just uh, shooting the breeze, chilling, putting our feet in the ice, that type of stuff. So, Nave, what video games have you been playing this last week? Uh, I'm pretty. Did I talk about beating The Witcher last week or was I still playing it? You were still playing it last week. Okay, well, I beat it. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, yeah, I, I was doing the DLC. I finished all of that. I went around and did all the achievements linked to, uh, Witcher contracts besides the one for doing all of them. Cause I still had like 15 left and I was like, eh, and yeah, so I, yeah. I just decided to quit. Um, but goddamn is the Witcher so fucking good. And I don't know why, like, like the, the blood and wine is the last expansion and it's a really good send off. But the Heart of Stone is just such a more gripping story. Well, I don't know why I'm telling you. You don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I'm just, I mean, that's no, how it is. I, I own the game. I just haven't played it. It's not that. I mean, it is that long. It's quite a It's quite a long game. It's, what was I playing it for like four or five weeks? Yeah, you're playing it for a pretty long time. And I, I know it actually has a Japanese dub. So then I look at it and I consider playing it in Japanese. But I feel like I'd miss too much of the story. Oh, that reminds me. Remember how I was bitching in Unicorn Overlord how the voices go by too fast? And you yeah. were like, sometimes you press a button and then it opens up a thing and th- it does that in Unicorn Overlord. So you can press oh, like X or something yeah. and there's a log and you can also have them repeat it back to you. Oh, that's so, great. I was like, oh, look, both of those things exist. That's pretty- See, that's like, I don't know, I'm just trying to think about it. Like, that's like be- better accessibility options because I'm pretty sure that stuff has been in like visual novels forever. Yeah, it makes sense for visual novels, but like, I don't, it's like you, that's not in Mass Effect. You know what I mean? (laughs) But uh, But that's like the same type of game as Unicorn Overlord, where it's like you're playing the game, but like there's people talking and maybe you're interested, maybe you're not. Well, it it always, uh, I saw an argument online literally today, whenever I was just like scouring the internet for content to put in the pod. And there was someone on like, I think it was like Quora or something like that. That was like, why are all JRPGs turning into visual novels or something like that? I'm like, is that a thing? Are they all turning into visual novels? It depends on which ones you're playing. I mean, there are just a ton of them made in RPG Maker. So like if you're if you're counting all of those, because there is a no gajillion. No one's counting those. Yeah, I'm not really. This is an Amori chat or uh, Amori, whatever that game was called. Well, Amori is an outlier. Which, by the way, so fucking Tales of the Backlog, every month he does like a Patreon poll. He's like something about a game. I don't fucking know what he's doing over there. But um, he in his poll, one of the games was Omori. And I was like, that's got 2% of the votes, maybe. And then I voted for it. And it was like three, maybe. I don't know. It was it was getting blown the fuck out by everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So even like the best RPG maker games are just getting blown the fuck out no, by well, uh, fucking about Crash a... Bandicoot team racing or something. Oh god, you were talking to the trolls in the goof troop today specifically about game genres and it's like all the good game genres are shooters. Everything else is just niche. You know, like nobody plays anything that's not a shooter. I wasn't saying that. I was fighting against that. All right, so oh, yeah. if you want to fucking bring this up, I got into a fight on Twitter. <laughs> not really a fight. <laughs> it was a discussion. A little a slapping match. But uh, so this fucking this 
this guy on Twitter, I can't remember his name. I think it's Nicola. He's like one of the fucking biggest idiots. He's like a complete moron. All right. And he's just a PlayStation fanboy. All he does is he posts some fucking egregiously stupid shit and then he leaves <laughs> and he just gets engagement that way. Right. Yeah. That's all he does every day, like 27 times a day. And occasionally I have the misfortune of that shit gracing my, my, my fucking feed. And then I feel the need to be like, you are so fucking dumb. I don't know what it is about this guy <laughs> that I'm not muting him outright. But it just, it gets some of my, aggr- it's a catharsis thing, I think. Anyway, uh, so he retweeted Wario64, uh, who was saying like, oh, uh, Dragon's Dogma got like two, two and a half million copies sold in the first week or whatever. And everyone's like, woo, you know, Dragon's Dogma, everyone's happy about it because that game fucking rules, apparently. I haven't bought it yet. Me um, neither. Uh, so Nicola retweets it and he's like, it's a fucking stupid ass meme. And it's like, but Final Fantasy Rebirth, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth selling 3 million copies in seven days. It's a flop. Yada, yada. It's a fucking a million word meme. So it's not funny right off the bat. But anyway, I said, I said the brain rot it takes to compare a household name to a niche title is astounding. You work really hard to look this fucking dumb and it shows. And then somebody underneath that who's another podcaster, apparently. I went and looked at his profile. I, I guess he's on a podcast, too. But he's like, you don't think Final Fantasy is a niche series of games? Really? Oh, my God. Is it? What the fuck? Do you, what, like, <laughs> I, 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 like, it's the fucking 12th highest grossing fucking series of all time in video games. Yeah, maybe 20 years ago. No, as of right now, <laughs> as of right now, it is the 12th highest selling fucking series. It, it's like, oh, yeah, what did I say? I was like... It's 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 a super niche fucking uh, franchise, right? It's even more it's even more popular than the unknown niche titles like Sonic the Hedgehog, Legend of Zelda. <laughs> like, what else has it fuck is it beating right now in sales? Like, I, I some people just say shit and they don't know the fucking words. And I every time I see that shit, I'm like, <laughs> I just don't know what to fucking do. Dear it makes me so mad. He is turning red on the camera. I fucking hate, I hate this, like, just, people just don't know what words mean, and I just, I, like, there's no way to communicate with these kinds of people. There is not. Oh my god. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? We were talking before about The Witcher. You, yeah, The Witcher's good. <laughs> I beat it. Yeah. Oh, nice yeah, niche title, The Witcher. Oh, we were talking about games turning into visual novels, like, what, what about in The Witcher if there's a log and you could just rewind conversations? Uh... Would you ever use it? Probably not. No, probably not. But this is the thing: like uh, Yakuza games have it to where like you can rewatch cutscenes, and I've used that a couple of times. Like sometimes I'll be, I'll get a bowl of cereal, and I'll be like, I'll just go rewatch a cutscene real quick. Like, go pull up the time Nishikiyama pulled oh, a gun man. on me. Like, <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I don't know. So stupid. But uh, I don't know. Like a lot of JRPGs are kind of like a little homogenous, but I think I, I might blame like Persona for that. Persona's very visual novel-y, but I, I don't... It's like, what else do you want them to do? Like, I think the thing that they're complaining about is that they're talking there's and there's reading. a... Well, yeah, it's like you're reading and there's like a cardboard cutout of the character there and like they're talking there and it's not like a 3D two people talking like in The Witcher or in Final Fantasy 16 or whatever the fuck we were just talking about. Yeah. They, they're, they're upset that they have to read. Nate hates this. Me and Nate got into an argument about Steins Gate, where he or was it Jono? Someone from the Elder Scrolls. I'm fucking screaming at them and making them <laughs> mad at me Oof, because they're like, they're like, oh, they're like the Steins Gate. An- I'm pretty sure it was Jono. The Steins Gate anime is amazing, and I was like, it's dog shit compared to the visual novel. And then I just kind oh, of no. fight with them. Of course, I was just fucking around, but yeah. it's like it. T- I'm for real though. I'm, I'm fucking around, but I'm for real. The visual novel is infinitely better. It's like imagine i'm i'm just like the people who are like the harry potter movies suck you gotta read the books brother but it's true Dude, it's like imagine <laughs> imagine you watch the anime and you get like five percent of all the context of everything and you're like i'm good i love that that's one of my favorite pieces of art of all time i'm good though i don't need to i don't need to learn anything else about this and I'm like, oh, man the, vis- the visual novel is so fucking good or dong and rapa is the same way I'm trying to remember one of our podcast partners, they did an episode. I've listened to so many episodes of our podcast partners, but they went into and they're like, oh, you know, I watched um, they were talking about. I don't remember the title. It's some dumb Japanese title. The time that one summer when I was reincarnated as a slime or something like that. I'm pretty sure that's an anime. I think you nailed it. Yeah, it is a thing. 
it's something like that. And he was like, oh, man, you know, the anime was so good that I went back and I read the manga. And then the manga was so good because it was way better than the anime because the anime completely washed out everything. And then I went back and read the light novel that like the uh, <laughs> the manga was based on. And he's like, the light novel was so much better than everything the manga did. It completely blew it out of the water. And I'm like, where where does it end? Like eventually That's where like, it ends. That's no, where it ends. No, there's a step beyond that if we're just talking about Japanese fiction because then you go to the web novel, which is, you know, like somebody wrote it in a forum nine years ago and you got to read that that before you got converted. Like, it, it well, I don't deep. know. I don't know about the web novel. The visual novel, that's like the finished product. You know what I mean? The, oh, the, the web novel, form. that's the draft. That's the, that's the drafting phase. The visual novel, because there's just so much extra shit that you get to observe and to have converse. It's like because you're interacting with it, you get to absorb all, so much more uh, uh, like story and context and like, uh, like the, the settings, but only as much as you want. Because you can just stop if you don't want to. You're like, I don't want to do any more side shit. I just want to mainline the story now. And that that's something that you don't get in like animes, especially Steins Gate, because there's I'm not gonna spoil it, but there's so much fucking variance that happens in that show that it does not appear or I, it, that happens in the visual novel that does not appear in the show. And some of the best fucking shit is in that variance that you don't get. Like and people were asking me, I, I don't think it was I think it was Nick from Friday Night Gamecast. He was asked I think he was asking me uh why is that like why do the animes like suck compared to the source material and i'm like they don't do it on purpose it's just money (laughs) it just costs way more money to animate and voice act and all of this shit to to the to the the anime you know what i mean and then they can only make eight episodes a year and you're like well that's what we got yeah that's the thing with Dog and Rampa is that they they made it to where every episode was from death from murder to trial and then the next episode from murder to trial I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly. And but then but it's like so you get 30 minutes with, or like 25 minutes with them in that in that whole series of events. Wh- meanwhile, in the video game, it's like two and a half hours. Yeah, it's it's a long time because there's it's not like, just the murder. There's the pre murder time where you yeah. just kind of goofing off and then the murder happens. As well. And then you get to hang out. You, you can spend your free time hanging out with different people and getting background information on all their characters and stuff, which gets you more connected to them, more attached. So, and you don't know who's going to die. So if you accidentally start talking to a person who dies that fucking, that trial, then you, then it's like, it, it feels really, uh, what is it? Emergent. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? I was getting to know one. you. But yeah. also, just like I was saying before, you don't have to spend free time. There are some people, like I think Colin Moriarty was like this, uh, of Sacred Symbols, he, where he just skips the free time every time. He doesn't want to fucking do it. He doesn't want to talk to any of the people. And that's totally fine. You can, And you still get a whole bunch of fucking cool shit with everybody. I, wait, wait, what are we talking about? Well, this might be going, like, uh, this is definitely getting out of hand, but what do you think, like, I was thinking about what a Western visual novel is, and I think about Gone Home. Or Firewatch, maybe? Uh, Homestuck, right? Homestuck? I don't Isn't even know Homestuck that is. Homestuck the most popular one? Mm. Homestuck, in a very vague nutshell, is a webcomic about some kids who play a video game that ends the world and transports them to uh, ellipses. I'm not clicking <gasps> on that. Okay. So use your imagination about what, where they went afterwards. <laughs> one of the chicks looks like uh, Mandy from Billy and Mandy. One of the That's girls nice. looks just like, oh, oh, I was just talking about this too. So I, I don't know who I was listening to, but they were talking about how in the in the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, you remember that show, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I, it's a seminal, seminal show yeah, for nineties kids. My life. Uh, so you know, you know the Grim, the Grim Reaper. They own the Grim Reaper, and he is a, a skeleton with like a Jamaican accent, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. So there is an episode where the Grim Reaper gets a human body, and so while they were making the episode, the artists like they were making the Grim Reaper, and they made him a black guy. And one of the higher ups were like, "Wait a minute, hold on, uh, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have the two white children own oh, a black no. guy." <laughs> <laughs> Did not see that one coming. So like, you need to Google the Grim, the Grim from Billy and Mandy with as a human because they made him just a white dude with like a pot belt. It's so fucking funny. You know, I was almost thinking that they were doing like a uh, oh, what's the what's the thing like the I guess he does have a Jamaican accent. I was thinking he has like, a what? very heavy Jamaican accent. <laughs> it does not make sense when you're looking at him talk yeah, on the screen. You could think about it like he's like what's the 
I forgot what it's called. The the spooky dude from the bayou. Spooky bayou, man. Spooky bayou. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it's a bunch of let's plays of uh, what is that game that JP loves? Oh, swamp swamp battle royale. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No one's. We're not getting any fucking games correct this no it's episode. it's not like a, i should keep thinking it's like a boogeyman but that's not it uh what is it called the rogaru I'm, I'm the rogaru what, I'm what you're is looking a, at now and that yeah. is that is, a, that is swamp werewolf and yeah. from haiti he looks <laughs> just like a fuck that t-shirt where they're how they got the moon this picture is awful this is hold on okay, there i have to no i have to add this oh, picture to the fucking mess that's it haitian haitian voodoo type man <laughs> there it is <laughs> hold on i'll get this <laughs> wait did you see the wikipedia one these photos are real good oh it's it's princess and the frog it has the the shadow man there what cool. oh my god look at that link <laughs> i've never seen the princess and the frog this looks like the guy from that fucking bad shooter game ninja theory made oh my god we're just doing this now hold on all right whatever let's give up and go back <laughs> this 3D picture of the werewolf in the swamp is so good. Where is it? Oh, the swamp. The yeah, notes, yeah. <laughs> dude. It looks like something from the Deadliest Warrior. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's like, look, we basically have an intern that can use 3D software, and he asset ripped like some random game or something like that. We can use this. They just put a wolf's head on a fucking death claw <laughs> from fucking Fallout. It's so good. Hey, we're back from our internet rabbit hole. I assume I cut out most of that, hopefully. The stuff that's not funny. Okay, so I beat The Witcher 3. Yes, you did. Um, I started playing L.A. Noir. I beat L.A. Noir. What? You beat it that fast? Well, you knew yeah. the answers. Right? Yes, I you did know the answers. You where to find the evidence. Well, the I, this is the thing. A lot of stuff I didn't really remember. You know what I really didn't remember? When's the last time you played L.A. Noir? It's been like 10 years since I've played L.A. Noir. Okay, I only know, like, I only remembered, actually, like, three things. One of which was the ending, so I'm, like, not going to spoil that. But the other two things, I remembered press X to doubt, and then I remember <laughs> I remember the scene where he's like, do you like the fuck young boys? And I'm like, whoa! <laughs> he just screams at somebody. And I just had no context for that in my brain. I just remembered that one scene. But well, this I, game uh, what's is so serious, dude. Like, it is way se more serious than I remember it being. What? No, you you crack jokes with your partner. Yes. You drive down the road. But there is, there is so much pedophilia in this game, dude. Oh, <laughs> it's like no. oh, half of the game is that. And it's all in the background. You're never investigating that. You're investigating an arson. And, and then that just appears in the middle of the case. Well, and you're just like, like yeah. I'll whoop your ass if you don't tell me. I'll tell people you're doing this. And... It's like holy shit! This is it. It, make, it makes everything so much less funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not a, it's not a happy game. Like, it's not a happy game. Dude. Every time you do anything, your partner is like, "What's your name?" Like Phelps or Phelps yeah, or something. Cole Phelps. Phelps. You're like Phelps. You need to you need to calm down with this stuff. Or when Phelps is like, "I'm gonna get to the end of this. I gotta figure out how deep <laughs> this rabbit hole goes." And he's like, "Phelps, you're you're doing too much." Everyone needs to play L.A. Noir. It is is legit. It's legit. It's fucking great. Uh, I I genuinely just didn't remember like the story beats, but I would like I would appear in a place and I'd be like, oh, uh, there's there's something over there. Get yeah, you know, the like, trash can. Yeah, I remember like stuff like that, you know. So yeah. I got a ton of the achievements in that. You spend a lot um, of time holding things in your hand and going hmm and flipping them back and forth. Yeah, don't think this pertains to the case. Be like, yeah, <laughs> he he can draw really well, like yeah. Nathan Drake level. <laughs> um. Which I think by the time this episode comes out, oh no, never mind. It'll be next week. But it, in the future, if you're listening to this, go listen to. I talked about Uncharted on on what is that? Gaming and collecting with Bill. Um, I keep burping. I'm trying to not burp into the microphone because it's gross. Um, so I beat LA Noir and I've started playing Final Fantasy X, and I am about halfway through that game. Whoa, really? I am that fast? yes, I am slamming. Oh wait, ten ten is the. Tin is the one with the laughing guy, right? Yeah, Tin. <laughs> he does that. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's the only thing i know about that game that intent yeah. two is about costume changing or something or clothes but it's on about clothes. Gross. i've literally never played it but i own it i own a sealed copy of it oh never mind that's not true i, I owned a sealed copy of resident evil code veronica i got i only have like four i know that's a weird it's like wow how'd you get those cookies i only have four playstation 2 games over there and i know it's not tony hawk or resident evil 4 so it was a 50 50 in my head dude have you seen the fucking discourse you haven't because you're not on twitter and that's why you that's why you're so much more optimistic than i am oh, <laughs> but there is su- there is a fucking discourse going on on Twitter about this game called Stellar Blade, which you probably no, don't even no I know is about it blood through because it is blood through to Facebook. Oh boy! So isn't it funny? Like when you when you see shit that's blood through on Facebook and it is just screenshots of tweets, and you're just like, oh, I wonder what Nave's doing over there. Shit's on fire on Twitter right now. It is always on fire. Man. It's the same post though. It's always like um, literally like every post about Stellar Blade is uh, Microsoft uh, hates beautiful women and yes and then the follow-up is sony creates unrealistic women follow-up it's based on a real woman designed also by a woman so yeah. it's like it is like these women are anti-feminist as well or something and there's like a there's a whole tri- like i don't know who's it's an ouroboros guy. yeah, yeah it's like an it ouroboros. goes back around where it's like everyone is the worst apparently and we should all be upset but also no one seems to care in the comments section yeah, well, it's the the thing is, it's so funny because it's the horseshoe theory. We don't want to get too political on this, but the far left and the far right both are hand in hand in wanting to keep sexy, scantily clad women out of our video games. I am pro sexy, a- scantily. I don't know. I'm just joking. Uh, well, they, just- well, well, that's the thing. The feminists think it's obje- it's sexually objectifying women, and then the the Christian people are like, "Oh, you shouldn't have this disgusting oh, filth on the okay. TV screen." Is essentially what I said, yeah, but in an yeah. Alex Jones way. Um, the, the discourse has bled into like all facets of games that have beautiful women in it. And there was people, cause it's like one of the things on Twitter is like the reason why resident evil spurred this memory is because people are like, Oh, you just hate sexy women. And uh, there was a big viral thread about, Oh, but if we just hate sexy women, look at how people talked about lady Dumatresque from resident evil eight, right? Big tall mommy. And everyone was fucking going crazy over her. They were going primal over this big mommy, even though most of it was just a meme. It was, and it's like, why was I bringing this up? I don't remember. I was bringing it up for some fucking reason. It doesn't matter. It's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. But the big issue, I think, though, was because of the Microsoft spark. of They put out some kind of press statement encouraging positive body type expression in their games or something like that. What I think it was, was it was an internal, like, it was like an internal slideshow or something that got Uh-oh. leaked and people were like, Oh, look at that. I, or something like that. And it's lame. But like, as far as the censorship goes, like Sony's worse about it. Like with, well, I don't know how much nowadays I haven't really been keeping up with like censorship on like women's bodies and shit, but like there was the controversy with the metal gear solid game with the ray of light in the place of the ass instead. And all the other, even the Nintendo. I don't remember. It, it's just, it's so stupid. Most of it is so dumb. And it's whenever I get in, I get into these like rat, not rabbit holes, but I get like pulled into these vortices on fucking Twitter where I become, I, I, I just start like swinging at everybody. I just can't help myself. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Yeah. Nobody knows what side of, or what is that? Uh, the meme? I'm so tired Enjoy. of thinking about it now. Anyways, Final Fantasy 10. You've almost beat the game already. Uh, Final Fantasy 10 is pretty good. It's better than I remember it being, but I still think it's mid. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I thought it was like lower mid, and now I think it is just middle mid. Look, you know, it's hard with Final Fantasies because, of, or, of course, we got, you know, seven, eight, nine, and then the rest of them. Yeah. So, well, this is the problem is that, like, I am so obscenely over Tetsuya Nomura, <laughs> Tetsuya Nomura, or whatever the fuck, Kingdom Hearts guy. This is insanely Kingdom Heartsy. Like it's and it's hard to get over. It's very childish, and but I can see, I can also see why people like it. You know what I mean? It's like very, very simple, but it's also got like it's got like real questions. It's got like real conflict. Like Waka being the most racist person, he calls <laughs> he calls the Albed like sand 
I don't even want to repeat it because it might be a real <laughs> yeah, life slur. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to. He calls. He says he says something about something, and it's like he sometimes he speaks. I'm just like, whoa, Waka, chill, brother, brother. <laughs> like it's fucking. Awful. I kind of like okay. belligerent characters in games though, like that. Like there was one in um, I was like Legend That's of Zelda fact. Skyward Sword, like a Zelda game. They had this one character named like Groose or whatever, and his whole thing was he was a bully for Link. And he was just obscenely aggressive with everything and just always like trashing him, if I remember correctly. I think his name was Bruce. Yeah. But he was also really lame looking. Let me see if I can pull him up. Zelda, the infamous niche title. Yeah. Oh, man. Look at this Chad. Because this is also the one where Link was in like a school for a little bit. He looks like a JoJo character almost. What I see, he looks like Android, the big Android. I can barely see from your reflection oh, the in 16. your PC tower. I yeah. mean, I linked it in the thing. Oh, is that what this is? I, I just saw a giant link, and I assumed it was the same one. <laughs> yeah, he does look like Android, whatever. He's got Waka's haircut. This is oh, exactly he? Waka's haircut, yeah. Oh, I wonder if he's based on Waka, and that's the whole the connection. Yeah, maybe. He has sideburns. Waka doesn't have sideburns. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I do always say I, I I do always say that I think racism in video games is provocative because you're able to tell all kinds of different stories with that. I wonder what the story's going to because I just don't remember anything from Final Fantasy X past like the five or six hour mark because that's always when I decide to quit uh, when I replay it. And I don't know. It's just interesting. It's just everything. Everything is so dumbed down. There's like nothing very like critical happening. Like in like critical thought. There's no critical thought happening. There's no like critical writing. But you can just kind of fill in the gaps with your own brain, like just let your own brain, like I mean, that's make shit up. Yeah, because like at least in Final Fantasy Thirteen, I don't even know what my brain could make up to fill those cracks. <laughs> yeah, there's no crack. <laughs> they over-explain everything. It's like the literal opposite problem. Even though both of these games are like exactly the same in that they are just hallways. The whole game is just a hallway. It's incredible. Yeah. Until you get to the fucking 10 hour, 10, 15 hour mark in Final Fantasy, in both of these games, where. Well, here's your chocobo. Yeah, well, instead in this game, you just get a big desert that every five steps you get zoo batted. Oh, gross. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking terrible. And they're just like, this is where you grind, buddy. <laughs> Hope you can find your <laughs> way out. Okay. Oh, man. I saw a meme. I don't know. I can't what game is it? It was either Dogma or Baldur's Gate. But it was one of these, like, I, I can't tell if it's a parody or not, but it's like the amount of fantasy racism in this game uh, shocked me to my core or whatever. And then, like, of course, the follow up comment is like, meanwhile, me still playing Morrowind, yelling, <laughs> you in <laughs> was and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the at the dark elves running by like, oh, Morrowind, because, of course, I'm still in Morrowind in posting or whatever. God, as Morrowind, a group. dude. <sighs> I fucking love. I just love Morrowind, but I hate. It's like uh, such a miserable experience. It's so weird. <laughs> it's not fun a lot of there's, the times. There's something about it that I love, but every time I turn it on for five minutes, I'm like, I can't fucking do this, man. I, I'm hit. I'm missing every attack. <laughs> Instead of whatever we're doing, let's do a top ten racist characters and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Top ten list, but they're all uncomfortable. Yeah, Ashley. From from meta, what is it? What I say before? Oh, Mass Resident Effect. Evil Four. Wait, no, she's not racist. Maybe they don't. Leon anything. Kennedy's definitely racist. <laughs> He's being racist. I don't yeah. speak whatever your language is, and it's like Spanish or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like clearly Spanish. Yeah, it's so funny. Oh, well, speaking of Leon, I uh, finished Resident Evil Two for my fifth Japanese game this year. I am just flying through them. Uh, I went back and I did, I didn't do Leon B. I did Claire B and I, Nave, I thought there was going to be actual, like more game to the end. There's like one boss fight and yeah. the rest of the levels are just remixed. Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was going to be more. <laughs> I wanted more in my second well, place. Isn't here. it cool? Well, isn't it cool that everything's different? Like no, you can the, see where, were you paying attention or were you just running yes, through it? No, the remix was great because it made it feel like, um, I don't know if you've ever watched like randomizer runs in like Zelda games and stuff like that. Yeah. Th that's what it felt like. I'm like, well, oh, Resident God, Evil, great. Resident Evil two is an infamous randomizer game. Like, is it? That game is heavily randomizer run. Yeah. It's they're, they're okay. fucking awesome. They're awesome. I mean, that to sounds watch. great. Like that's what it felt like. It was playing like a well done randomizer. Uh, my only point is the second, 
the the B version or remix version of the chess puzzle was even harder than the first one. <laughs> I thought the first one was hard, but the second one, it's like I actually was able to understand part of it. I don't know. I guess my skills improved at this point, but it's like I understood that the 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 label on the night is the wrong label or something like that. I'm like, oh no. So instead of like just you were able to get half of them just by following the labels in the first playthrough, and then I was able to brute force the rest of them. The second one is like, yo, even the labels can be wrong. And I'm like, I had to, I had to look up a walkthrough <laughs> for this one puzzle, just the chess puzzle. Because I didn't know it was like the queen is looking at the rook, but he's next to the king, but not next to the knight. And I'm like, I, I don't understand what's happening. But I beat it. I got the secret engine or ending or whatever. And uh, well, secret. It's just it's just an- another boss fight. And oh, I found the one I was looking for. Good. Keep good. talking. And then I played the hunk. Uh, Survivor, which Little that one was mini that was action packed. Like I was like yeah, sweating dude. as I went through because it's like, man, this is like, what if we made Resident Evil a sh- like a, a pure shooter? Like they did it in Resident Evil Seven, I think, where you play as Chris, right, going back through the the whole levels, just running and gunning. Uh, yes, Isn't, yeah, I think it's seven. Is it seven? The one that's just biohazard or whatever. Yeah, I think it's seven. I'm trying to remember because I, I, I don't know. If it was seven, I didn't fuck with it too much because eight was the one I played. Oh, not much. seven. It was eight because we played seven. Because seven was the one that had uh, <laughs> the the love of the boys in mutant arm. No, Where that's we... six. Wait, no, you're right. That is six. Okay. <laughs> There's so seven many was the first. I know. I'm trying not, and I'm looking at this this randomizer now too to make sure it's the same. I'm just uh, there's too much going through my brain right now. Okay, yeah, but Resident Evil Seven, where you have the the Swamp family. Yeah, that's seven. Yeah. Okay, those it's guys. Gotta be. There's a a after game playthrough where you play as Chris and you go to like the mines nearby or something like that, but they just give you all the guns and they're like, "Go get them, Tiger." And you just run and gun. All right, Nave linked me a randomizer for Resident Evil. Oh, oh don't watch that. It's fucking like, like 50 minutes long. It's 50 minutes long. Watch that some other time. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the first Resident Evil. Dude, this it doesn't matter. Like, what game? Like, when do they make it HD? This looks really good. This is the GameCube remake. No way. Yeah, that's the GameCube. I mean, he's playing on a PC, so he's pro- he's got a re- randomizer mod, so he's probably got other mods. Oh, yeah, it definitely looks like widescreen hack inv- enabled, too. Or maybe it's just because of the bars. But this looks really but, good. Look, I, didn't, legit, I didn't know there was this a GameCube is... HD version. It does the only one really I good, remember on GameCube, they had 4 and they had Resident Evil 0. Yeah, and they re- yeah. That, but yeah, they that was the very first remake, was that one that was there. Which is funny because... Or is that Resident Evil 1? No, that's definitely 1 because it's Chris yeah, and Jill. Yeah, because it had Chris and Jill, yeah. As I was flipping through. But this guy, Neocranium, he's very funny. He's got a lot of these. Ran- he's got a handful of these randomizers. Nice. All right. Or look, he did this. He did a run where he played the Resident Evil 4 remake. But I think if he died or if Ashley died, then he had to restart. But he was dressed as Ashley in Ashley cosplay the whole time. Oh, God. Like with high heels and everything. <laughs> It's really he's a really funny streamer. Anyway, all right, but uh, yeah, Resident Evil Two remake real good. Next up, uh, Octopath Traveler Two. I'm gonna probably try to make this game number six. I think I'm like 14 hours into it at this point, and it's it's a very solid game. Like I don't remember the first one very much because I only played it for like two hours or so. But the second one is straight bangers. Like sucks that it didn't come to Xbox or whatever, but it's a it's a good game. I definitely recommend it for if anyone's looking for a, uh, I don't know, like a simple RPG. What really got me is I got, I've started doing a lot more of the cross classes. So you can combine like your beast master and your medic to make like a beast master medic. And it gets the abilities of both classes. I don't know, it's, it's really well done the way they did like the multi class system. You can kind of do that in Final Fantasy X. Ooh. Where like, I don't know if you played Path of Exile, but it's got the same like skill board. No, I didn't. There's a million fucking dots everywhere, and you just unlock them as you go. And then as the game goes on, like, you get keys to unlock more of the board. But, like, the, everyone shares the board. So, like, you can get your swordsman guy and go into the white mage territory and, like, start learning cure and cura and shit. That's pretty, pretty cool. Neat. 
Yeah, so there were runs of Final Fantasy X where it's like, all right, I want the cat man to be my black mage. And it's like on the opposite side of the board, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> he's going to take a long there. time to get over. Yeah, the cat man's actually unique because he's in the center of the board. So he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. And there's oh. like two different ways you can play at the beginning where it's like you can do like expert difficulty. Well, it's not difficulty. It's like, do you want the board to be straightforward or do you want the board to be freeform so that ever it's, it's it's i don't know what i don't know what it changes specifically but it makes it to where it's like easier to like cross class and shit like that hmm. i see which I means see. it's easier to fuck yourself <laughs> because you don't level up in that game at all so it's like if you fuck up and you start screwing things up too bad and some of your characters suck then you're just fucking ruined oh no. you gotta play final fantasy 10 it's on my t- playlist i don't own it yet but i'll, I'll probably pick it up uh, now that I've been spurned by the Microsoft Store, I'll probably either get it on Switch or get it uh, on Steam or something like that. I think it was on sale on Steam recently. It probably is. Those games are always going on sale. The next game I've been playing, though, Battlefront Classic from last episode. I'm still playing the single player. Like, this has become my uh, the replacement for Brotato, where I just drop in and mindlessly kill things. I've already completed, like, a Galactic Conquest. I'm going through the Battlefront 2 story mode at this point. And like you unlock those achievements really fast. Like I'm just popping these achievements like every day. And now that makes me want to go for all the achievements. The but I know you told me one's broken. The, the yeah, last one. The achievement for uh, yeah, getting everything. Let me see if it's still fucking broken. But keep talking. I assume it is. I assume they're never going to fix it because yeah. that's usually how these things go. Well, some it, it's like it's like sixty forty, honestly. They usually but, get fixed, but Asper, yeah, they usually get fixed. But I mean, Asper, let's be real. Yeah. Not, not okay, good. the achievement is still unobtainable. Yikes! Oh, Hell well. to the yeah, brother. All right, but that's on. all the let's games. See, I want to see the people coping and seething. Let's see if people... <laughs> there's a lot of people in chat just trash comments. Them. Uh. Nothing. It's just people repeatedly every couple of days going, new update didn't a- fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, poor pe- poor souls. Have you been watching uh, along with the, the Switch news? Like with the Switches being hacked and anti-piracy and all that stuff? No. So some Russian company dropped a, a flash card for the Switch, which like the old Game Boys, you can just... L- plug in an SD card with a game on it and play it right on your Switch without doing any hardware modification. And of course, everyone is like waiting for Nintendo to do something because Nintendo just took down Yuzu, which was yeah. the predominant PC Switch emulator. Yeah, I think somebody uh, immediately like uh, backed it up and put it on like a oh, drive yeah, of somewhere. Course. Uh, but, and I think... The 3DS emulator that was made by one of the people on the Yuzu team caught a stray in that and also went down. And it was like the lead 3DS emulator, even though like the 3DS is not supported by Nintendo anymore at all. Very annoying. Anyways, uh, the, these flashcards, everyone keeps watching all the Switch updates because the Switch gets an update like every you know week or whatever. Just a, a system update. And people keep posting... They did not add anything that can, you know, <laughs> detect these these cartridges yet. And so everyone's just waiting for them to put out something, some anti-piracy method to stop these cartridges. But it hasn't happened yet. But fuck Nintendo. Anyways, I uh, we, I think that covers all the games we've been playing. Yeah. Do you have any nave buy section or news? Uh, no. All right. Let's thank our Nave-buy patrons then. Thank you, Berserk of This, K.O. Cappy, Mr. Quang, Insane Cracker, Nick and Knight, and the Intergalactic Pinecone. Insert, you know, Wii music here from Nintendo. And dear listeners at home, if you're not a supporter for us, and I can tell by the metrics, we're averaging, you know, I think last time I checked it was like 90 downloads a week on average, which is pretty good. And I think it's one of the highest we've been when we're not artificially inflated by twin breakers. And that means a lot of y'all are not subscribed to our Patreon. Maybe uh, at least one or two of you throw some cash in there and maybe we can start working at a uh, a positive and not a deficit. Yeah, we're going to try and do more goofy things. Throw your names into stupid things that I decided to cook up and not tell Philip about until the last minute. Yeah, but I got to like think that. about it. And with that, Nave, I have went out and I have collected a whole bunch of assholes. But before that, 
since this is specifically an asshole episode, we need to have a, a little palate cleanser to get us ready. So I have collected a bunch of Quora's. So I've collected totally 20, different. Yeah, 26 Quora's of just people that need questions answered. So I'm going to roll the dice and see what question we need to answer. Number 26, which is... Oh, this one's deep. Here, I'll link it to you. You know, it's uh, off topic, but we got a random uh, message on Twitter. Someone followed us. I followed them back, whatever. And then they were like, hey, thanks for the back." I typed in gaming podcasts into the search <laughs> bar. And you, you guys were one of the things that popped up. Our name's finally paying off, Philip. Oh, we got that IPO. Is that what it is? Is that what the, the acronym is? What does that stand know, for? I don't know what it stands for, but people always say it when it goes with names. And I don't know business talk, but I think it's a good thing. Well, I guess it's advertising talk. Oh, IPO. Is that a Gundam thing? <laughs> yeah, I think you made something <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is- I- IBO, Iron Blooded Orphans. It's one of the, the second newest Gundam series. There we go. We got that Iron Blooded Orphans. Which that was, I, that was like my first Gundam series I watched all the way through. Iron Blooded Orphans, real good. It's about orphans that connect their <laughs> what? Yeah, I know they're like spinal cords to their Gundams to pilot them. But the procedure to connect it, so like you know, one in five goes wrong and just kills them. It's not Where great. does the iron and the blood come in? I think that's the whole point is that they're like they're jacked in. Oh, and because true. they're jacked in, they have like they can control it with their brains. Which makes them faster than people that are not jacked in. Anyways. There's a, a fucking there's a tweet that was like a Dextero, which is just like a they regurgitate news, and they're like, a study shows that, or study shows that people can see in different FPS, like people see in different <laughs> FPS, and I'm like, <laughs> duh, like Wait, isn't that obvious? I don't even think people see in FPS. I don't think so. But if you had to calculate it, how would you calculate that? No, I think it would have to be uh, signal speed from light <laughs> hitting your eye, your retina, right? Well, it, like, no, it wouldn't be that. It would be because light is constant. It would be your the amount of time it takes your brain to determine to what it's, vision. Yeah. yeah, what it's looking at. I guess and your brain might actually recognize some things faster if it's already familiar because you could be drawing from memory as well. Well, that is definitely for, that is for sure happening. But yeah. it was, I don't know what they were doing because I didn't read the study, obviously. But I assume they were just sitting them in front of a computer and just playing things at 30 frames and 60 frames at 80 and 120. You know what I mean? And just yeah. alternating until people couldn't see anymore, which is, isn't that how they do hearing tests? Oh, dude, I hate, like, whenever I was working on the flight line, that causes severe hearing loss. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to get a hearing test like every six months or so. And like, you just sit in a dark, quiet room with headphones on and you have a button and it's like every time you hear a beep press the button and you're in his like beep oh wait beep. it's like super low so you don't even hear it so like you're like do you hear the beep i don't know so just push the button anyways and so you're just kind of hitting the button and it'll say something like do not push the button until you hear a beep and i'm like i thought i heard a beep i got a meme for this oh god the life of a scorpion tank machine gunner tank beats everything and the tank fires and his ears start bleeding and then he's talking to a doctor and the doctor says your loss of hearing is not service related so what's gonna happen to all the airplane mans and they're that loud stuff whatever you were just saying before yeah all that sound damage all right so anyways back to our Korra to get us get us going nave what anime made you rethink your entire life (laughs) look at this top answer uh i mean i would assume you can't just say look at this top answer but you, we can read the top answer. Uh, I would assume is... it's like Full Metal Alchemist, right? Oh yeah, what did that change about you? I don't know. I don't know. Did anime change me? It's I mean, hard we, to like. We had a huge discussion about uh, Dragon Ball, like you know, yeah, last episode. I mean, well, I, I, I was trying was... to not say Dragon Ball, but <laughs> yeah, it's hard to not say that one. But that one's like literally the thing that like connected me to people. So like, that was, and I already talked about that. Like you said. I'm trying to think of just like the dumb ones, Fooly Cooly, uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force changed my life. <laughs> the famous anime, the <laughs> niche anime. Uh, I mean, like there's the big ones that I remember watching growing up, like Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist. I'm not sure which one would, I would say changed my life though. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Full Metal's probably like 
gotta be like the most popular answer, right? Besides Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball seems obvious. Uh, any of the shonen ones, any of the ones about growing up, if you're growing up alongside that, like w- that would affect you significantly, right? Yeah, definitely. It would have to. Spy Family changed my life. <laughs> Did Spy Family change your life? Yeah, Spy Family helped me come out of the closet of uh, liking cute shit, I guess, <laughs> where I just overtly was like, I love this. And everyone was like, okay. Which, by the way, the spy movie family's coming out on the 19th, Philip. Are you going to go see it in theaters? Probably not. It's probably not going to be any theaters nearby for me. Maybe, actually. What I'm do you mean? Sure. There, it, it's, in like, it's in like nine theaters just in OKC. It's that definitely really? going to be. Yeah. All right, that'd it's be my it's worldwide. See. It's only on the 19th, it's, which is a Friday, I think. So I would, I would go hit it. I'm going to go see it in IMAX. I'm going to see you know, the fucking giant seven. What is it? What is IMAX re- resolution? I don't know. It's huge. Huge Anya. Big anyway. Anya. I don't know. If I had to pick one, I would say uh, like teasing Master Takagi-san. Like, because that whenever I started my like Japanese learning journey, that was like the first series that I could comprehend what they were saying and talking about. And I'm like, I could fucking do this. Japanese ain't, <laughs> ain't fucking hard. And it's a, a series about young romance between middle schoolers and how they're always screwing each other over with teasing. Great. Yeah, I mean, no, it's really. Well, I mean, sweet. like you gotta have like you gotta have like a simple anime to first to like get you into what are you talking about? Learning Japanese. Learning Japanese, Fuck. yeah. Had a stroke you know, just uh... then. <laughs> you can't start with fucking Death Note, dude. It's like I tried to read Full Metal Alchemist, just like the manga, <laughs> and they just go into it. There's like yeah. military ranks. There's like names for chemicals and compounds. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, dude, he repeats the fucking the compounds of the human body like a hundred times. That so often, just in the first, the very first volume, I think he did it like two times. Once when he's talking to Rose, he he mentions like the whole thing with a huge text bubble, and I'm like, I already know what he's saying in this, and I can't. Yeah, I don't know any of these words. And then he does it again in like a flashback in the same the same chapter. <laughs> Whenever they're like putting everything together. But yeah. Uh good stuff. Go watch Takagi san and Spy Family in Dragon Ball. And Fryrin. Oh, you think Fryrin's a deep cut? It's not a deep cut. Fryrin is huge right now. What is it all is I think it's my anime list. It's number one it's the number one an- rated anime now. It's over Full Metal Alchemist, brother. Really? Yeah. It's over I was all thinking of the about big stuff. Another one I watched a lot growing up was Italia. Did you ever watch that one? I don't think so. It was, it's a comedy about, oh man, like, it is it's so about good. the countries, right? It's about Italy. Yeah. It's about all the countries in world war one and two. I think and you showed just, me that in high school. Yeah. And I'm like, this is so incredible. And you're probably like, what is this fucking dumb shit? Yeah. <laughs> this is not Inuyasha. <laughs> no. Oh dude. Inuyasha is a good one too. I watched a lot of Inuyasha. It's like, you yeah, but it was, Halo we were talking, and, I don't know who the fuck I was talking to about this. It was probably Bill and Thrak of the 3DO podcast. They were, we were talking about Inuyasha, and it's like every time we watched it, it was out of order on, oh, on yeah, Adult Swim. And so we just, I, like, there was no cohesive narrative. You were just watching one episode at a time in random fucking seasons. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. Good stuff. Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. I mean, we're just naming off the Adult Swim ones at this point. Yeah. That's what the problem is where it all Everything comes back but to. Big O. <laughs> Dude, I love Big O, though. Like, Big O was so weird. Because it wasn't like any other show that I watched at the time. Because it was also so serious. Yeah, and and the robots were so slow. And they moved (laughs) like how you would imagine robots moved. Yeah. Oh, God. That's good stuff. Next up, uh, let's actually get into uh, Am I the Assholes? So let's uh, roll the dice. We have 115 of these bad boys on the hook. Let's see what fate decrees. 24. That's the answer to the universe, right? Is it 24? I thought it was like 42. Maybe it's 24. Same difference. All right, here, I'll link it to you. It's the six and nine guy pointing down at the number on the ground. So dumb. Locked con- locked post. Oh, oh, removed no. by moderators. Removed by the moderators? Don't post tell me that. Removed due to the status of the original poster's account. This account is currently shadow banned or suspended. Uh, uh, can we find an OP post or a bot? Oh, uh, found it. 
I don't fucking know how you found it. There's a lot of fucking. I control F to bot. Oh, yeah, auto moderator. We need to like start auto. Just control just F auto mod. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'll read this first one. This is from a shadow banned account or whatever. Apologies for bad English. It is not my Wait, first what's the language. Name? Title. Oh, the title. Uh, the title yeah. was. Would I be the asshole if I don't let my father-in-law gift my son a Steam Deck? That's another Steam Deck gift. <laughs> what if it's the same family? No. Well, there's been like multiple Steam Deck issues, I think. It's a bad gift. It's, bad. it's like cursed. Apologies for bad English. It is not my first language. Also, I am on mobile in case format is strange. Wait, for wasn't the other Steam Deck one also like Sp- they were Spanish, right? I don't remember. It's been so long. Oh no, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the 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 dad who stopped their daughter from watching anime. And they were Spanish. <laughs> oh yeah, that was it. Yeah, and we joked about Dragon Ball Z and then he for sure at, at the bottom somewhere commented that he the only anime he watches is Dragon Ball Z. It was very funny. All right. Anyways, for context, I 41 male have three children, Ava 11 female, John 14 male, and Kevin 16 male. My wife passed away about five years ago. When that happened, my father-in-law was like a second dad to them. He moved so he could be closer to them and babysat them a lot of the time. Also, my father-in-law is very wealthy, if it matters. I noticed when he was spending time with them, he was much closer to John than any of any of my other kids. John is the oldest boy. No, he's the youngest boy. He's 14. In case it matters. Confusing. Yeah. They would often go fishing together amongst other activities. Whereas he wasn't as close to Ava or Kevin, mainly because they don't have similar interests. Kevin is more into playing computer games, and Ava likes to play dolls and do arts and crafts. Recently, John has been spending a lot of time at his grandpa's house, as he is helping him with garage sales, so that he can move into our granny flat in the backyard. John has been helping him Saturday, Sunday, but I think he just likes spending time with him. Father-in-law also asked Kevin if he could come and help, but he declined. John has been helping him for about three weekends in a row now, and they are finally finished with the garage sales. As a reward for helping him, father-in-law decided to gift John a Steam Deck, which is like a handheld PC. John was amazed as he had no clue father-in-law was going to buy him one. Kevin was extremely upset as he really wants one and has been working part-time to try to buy one. Kevin is also now complaining that if he'd known he'd get a Steam Deck, he would have helped with the garage sales. I asked John if he would mind sharing his Steam Deck with his brother, but he refused, saying that Kevin never <gasps> lets him use his PC, so he shouldn't have to share the deck. Ava doesn't really know much about computers, but she is upset that her brother got a highly expensive gift for no special occasion. I'm thinking of returning the Steam Deck to Father-in-Law and asking him to get a refund as the deck hasn't been taken out of the packaging. Also, I'm annoyed that I wasn't told that he planned to give my son an expensive gift, so would I be an asshole if I gave it back? Uh... Okay, so core issue, father-in-law bought an expensive gift for one of his grandchildren and didn't get anything for the others. But it his, was favorite. his favorite. His favorite, one. who also spends the most time with him and also helped him with a garage sale multiple weekends in a row. Well, I mean, without all of that context, it seems like you're, it's probably an asshole move. But, but with context. This is the issue, is that they're all children, and so they're all selfish little shits. Because they don't have any understanding of empathy. Yeah. But um, of course they're going to feel like things are unfair. But this kid got paid a Steam Deck for helping with garage sales. I mean, garage sales, that takes a lot of fucking work. You know? I mean, I don't know what he did. He could, I don't know what he could have done. I mean, he's 14. He could have maybe moved stuff around. And, you know, yeah. he's not. he's probably not bartering, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's security. Maybe he's got, like, a Guitar Hero guitar that he whacks somebody with if they start walking off with something. But, uh, I mean, it seems like he's just getting paid for what he did. And it's like a Steam Deck is something that a kid would really like, you know. But, of course, everyone, all of them are kids. So, all of them are probably going to want to mess with it. You know, you got games on your phone kind of situation. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Because I don't, I don't have kids, so I don't know how I would deal with this. I don't have multiple kids, let alone one. My, I, I have a hard enough time uh, not feeding my dog all of my food because she stares at me sad. So yeah. I, I, I don't know how to deal with this kind of situation. I have three kids 
And if this happened with my kids, I think I would be annoyed at my father-in-law for gifting such an expensive gift for one, because I want a Steam Deck. Yeah. <laughs> but two, uh, I don't think I'd be annoyed if, like about the other kids complaining at that point, uh, because I'd be like, deal with it. Like, maybe yeah. you should have helped grandpa. Like, I, I, I don't have like, any mercy for these kids. This is the thing. The 16-year-old, whatever. But the 11-year-old, I kind of like, okay, that it would be hard to conceptualize as an 11-year-old. Then the 11-year-old doesn't need a Steam Deck. Yeah, it doesn't need a Steam Deck. But, I mean, she could have. A 11-year-old doesn't need a Steam Deck, probably. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that, too. I mean, it just depends on what kind of, like, gaming. Because they said they have a, a PC, right? Like yeah, the but older that's one the, has a PC. The 16 year old PC. I mean, I feel like this could be a good setup. This could be his PC. Like this is easy. Like all's fair at this point. I like that. Yeah, because Kevin doesn't. Kevin's the one with the PC, and he doesn't let his little brother, who, the one that got the Steam Deck, play on it usually, which makes sense because PCs are very intimate compared to co- Xboxes, right? Yeah. Well, the Steam Deck is just a PC, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got his own little thing. I, you're is it the 14 years old a little young but i i wouldn't it's like you're gonna be getting on the internet anyways and the only thing i'd ba- mainly be worried about is him breaking it 14 year olds are probably still pretty rowdy but the younger sibling being a girl it's like there's a lot of there's not a lot of uh not a lot of moments to break a Steam Deck, it feels like, in this household. Unless the 16-year-old, the 14-year-old still wrestle. I have no context of these what ages you, anymore. Yeah, what children are like. I remember when I was young. Well, the thing is, is that the children I'm around are, like, very young. Like, most of them can barely talk, and the ones that can talk barely form sentences. So, I don't know if that's 14 years old. I don't think so. 14 years old is, like, almost to high school, right? Yeah, 14 is in high school. That's like a oh. freshman. Do you remember okay. what you were like as a freshman? A fucking moron. I was yeah, a fucking I'll never idiot. Forget fucking, I think that was when you broke your arm too, right? That no. was the year after I broke my arm. Uh, okay. Which that that's a good story we can tell the listeners. I'll tell you how I remember it. It was like <laughs> lunchtime, but instead of eating lunch, we were out digging around the hallways and we walked by the gym and they had the big wrestling mats rolled up in the huge Rolls, towers standing on towers yeah even. and it was like and Steven, it was like ninja warrior you, you know and Steven I mean? were like oh man we're definitely gonna climb on these and i'm like oh, i don't know about this guys and, <laughs> and i'm like i'm not climbing on this and you two both climb up there and then it topples over and you eat shit and you fall on your arm and it just makes a loud noise and i'm like deuces and i walked away and i'm like, <laughs> and I'm, like I'm not dealing with this <laughs> Okay, so this is what picking up from that moment. That was based. That was pretty accurate representation. I didn't, I forgot it was Steven that was up there with me. I didn't remember who was up there with me. But uh, I walked to the the class that I have after lunch. This is Lady Miss Gregg. I don't know if you remember her, but uh, no. she she is this English teacher, and she's a little crabby. But um, she, me, and her have a good relationship. Like we love each other. Like I'm a class <laughs> clown. And so I'm always goofing off in her class and sleeping and she's always yelling at me and stuff, but we have a good relationship. And when I get in there, I'm like, Miss Craig, Miss Craig, I think I broke my arm because it hurts and I can't move my hand. So that those are two things usually synonymous with breaking a bone. And so she's like, no, you did not Come here. Let me see it. And she grabs my arm and shakes it a little bit to get me to move my hand. Yeah. And if, and you know the whole time I'm like kind of smiling and you know goofing I'm 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 still being a fucking idiot but as soon as she does that I'm like ah <laughs> like, like real real it was real pain uh, and she goes oh my god I'm so sorry uh, well I guess go to the office and go <laughs> home. you broke your arm <laughs> well so uh, the principal calls my dad my dad comes and he is like you're going to the hospital I'm like I really just want to go home and play rock band if that's okay and he's like no. Your 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 insurance is go is is your is like overlapping or whatever soon. So if you broke your arm, you we need to do it now. And I was like, okay, whatever. And so I go there, and sure enough, I broke my wrist in like four places. Oh, and babe. I sh- and I show up to school with a cast. Now get this, listener. This is the second to last day of school. <laughs> Summer break is in two days. 
and I show up in a cast, and Miss Gregg is like so apologetic. She because she's like, "Oh my god, you really did break your arm," and I shook it. That's insane. <laughs> I wasn't worried about it, it, but it was just so embarrassing because everyone, it, of course, I broke my fucking arm before summer break. Yeah. And then I still made you play the drums and rock band with your stupid elbow. Flaw. Oh, yeah, dude. I learned I learned how to play Rainbow Six Vegas 2 with like holding my middle finger on the analog stick and using my left knee to like <laughs> hit the left trigger. So stupid. And now I have permanent wrist pain because I did not take the cast <laughs> seriously. Oh, no. So sad. Good times, though. All right, but uh, wrapping it up with these guys, I think this is pretty cut and dry. I don't think you should say anything. Don't be an asshole, because this is a, would I be the asshole? Just let it go. Tell the other kids to deal with it. Yeah, I wouldn't return it. Like, it just seems like it would just uh, cause more, I don't know, s- it, strife. Yeah, there's going to be, like, resentment if he tries to do something. All right, rolling the dice. 102. Oh, what a great title. At the bottom. Yeah. Oh, man, this is long. I'm glad you got this one. Oh, God. This one is long. I mean, at least it's not deleted. We've been getting a fucking hot streak in deleted ones. So we combo break. Combo broke. All right, main account check. This is Doctor, a main account. Dr. Dr. Wyvern. Wyvern. Yeah. Uh, looks like they post in... <clears throat> uh, does that say premenopause? Yeah, no perm permenopause. Where perimenopause? What is that? Uh, I don't know. But wait, it, wait, wait. The the menopause wiki is here. <laughs> wait, what did I just click on? This is not Wikipedia. Well, the description for r slash permenopause is: in our playground, we have a giant mood swings and emotional roller coasters. Buckle up. This is literally just menopause. Yeah. She's, oh, she also posts in uh, pharmacy technician. But uh, she's a patient, not a tech. She also posts an insurance, r slash insurance, r slash vent. R uh, what is this? Dry th- skin, thin, men. Oh, no, I'm still in pre-menopause. <laughs> I, got, I got sidetracked, I guess. Oh, she's asking in a cat advice about litter box. All right, well, we've got a nice little. Oh, she that? Put, the there's a picture setting. of her cat as well. Oh, wait, hold on. I got to see the cat. Yeah, the cat's sleeping. As cats tend to do. Yeah, so oh, she God. is very active. Oh, and apparently, uh, oh, she posts a lot. Oh, my God. There's just a lot going on with this person. Oh, man. Dude, this person is all over the place. Yeah. They're also in, like, statistics. In I saw one know. that's r slash not how girls work, and I was like, oh, this will be fun, and it is not like, fun. very explicit. <laughs> it is about... It is it's describing multiple different types of sex. Hell yeah, brother. Well, skip that one. This is a family show. And now read this uh, this post. All right. Am I the asshole for asking my wife to stop giving hints while playing our game and getting upset that she played on without me? We said this is the chick, right? I think so. Because I just realized you can, t- you can post the menopause thing about your wife having <laughs> menopause. And she, this person's not, I was just complaining last episode. Oh, I hate when they do the male female thing and now it's not here. And I'm like, oh, I kind of wish it was here. Cause that would explain. Well, no, things. in, in the menopause thing, she says I'm 37 going through early per menopause. Okay. And I didn't read it. I just saw it. Yeah. So she's female. Okay. Background. My wife and I are playing co-op mode through gears of war games. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> co-op mode. My favorite co-op mode. mode. Call mode through Gears of War games as a special thing to do together. We are currently on number two. I'm not a gamer, per se. I play some games, but not a lot of FPS. So these games on normal mode are fairly difficult for me, but not impossible. First of all... Hey, first of all, this is not an FPS. This is actually... A- <laughs> hold it! All right. Uh, I play plenty of RPGs, though. She plays more shooters, but still prefers other types of games. We chose these games because they were the only co-op games free on Game Pass right now. Hold Hashtag on. Game Pass. Yeah, but also there's so many other co-op options. They did not have to go for the Gears titles. Uh, what if there? Because there is a co- there is a Game Pass like core that is just games for gold now, and they have a small selection of Game oh. Pass games to play. And then uh, so maybe she's Microsoft talking about ones. that. Yeah, yeah, it's just Microsoft. Never mind. This was three years ago. You're right. She's wrong about this. There's a million games to play on Game Pass that are go up. 
she got manipulated by her wife. <laughs> her yeah, wife was like, definitely the one that was like, this is the only co-op game on the whole Game Pass. All right. She has a habit, while I'm playing any game, whether she is observing or playing co-op with me, of giving me hints of how to play, such as use this move to get through this part, etc. I have asked her to stop... I've asked her before to stop doing this so I can play on my own, but she has not. Oh, no. This is called backseat gaming. Uh, Yesterday while playing, she gave me a hint similar to the example above, and I said, can you please stop giving me hints on how to play? Just like that. Not upset. Oh, not upset or anything. I said a little upset. (laughs) Just asking her to stop. She immediately became very defensive, said an exaggerated, sorry, princess. (laughs) She didn't say princess. And claimed she was just giving tactics on how we should play together, not actually giving hints. So basically how I teach people play League, how to play League of Legends. Mm-hmm. I'm not teaching them how to play League. I'm just literally trying to mold them into the perfect support for me. All right. When I questioned how this was supposed to be tactics instead of hints, trying to honestly understand, things devolved into an argument in which I was accused of being defensive and angry and insulted in my intelligence of gameplay. She asked if I would if I would honestly have gotten it on my own. Brutal. After being interrupted and spoken over several times, I decided I needed a break for a few minutes, so I stepped out of the room, letting her know that I just needed a few minutes apart for both of us to calm down. Good move. Shortly after I left the room, I heard her resume the game without me. (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) Terrible. Fucking awesome. Uh, We were playing in co-op split-screen mode, so this obviously upset me. I came back into the room and saw her playing on without me, letting my character just idle on its screen. I think in Gears of War, if you idle long enough, it just goes NPC, right? Or is that only online? It might just be an online thing. I can't... uh, Wait... I walk over and shut the console off. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Scorched did, Earth. Yeah, both of them. Take the power cord out. Uh, she swore. Did you see that? There was this video I saw where this woman walked in. It, like there were people playing uh, like FIFA or something. I don't know. And the chick walked in and grabbed the Xbox One and smashed it on the ground and walked walked like out. And the guys were obviously freaking out. And then she came back in with like a PS5, like a an upgrade. It was pretty funny. Hmm. I don't know why I brought that up. Cut that out. Uh, What was I saying? Oh, okay. She swore at me. She swore at me. And I angrily said some things about her playing on without me. Then left the room again. We haven't spoke since. I think she may be the asshole for getting upset at a simple request, which I had already asked for in the past, and playing the game without me. I think I may have gone too far with shutting off the console. So that is where I might be the asshole. I probably could have just asked her to stop playing. Uh, the good thing is, is that this game has quick resume, so they just turn it back on and just resume right from where you... If this was PlayStation, be, if it was a PlayStation 2, it'd be terrible. So, do, is this edit all of this? Uh, looks like it. Okay. It looks like there's so, an addition. Alright, so let's 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 not... Not the edit yet. What do you think so far? So, both of these people don't sound great, but at this point, she's like our main character seems to be the injured party in this but also it's it's her reactions that aren't helping the situation well, yeah, it seems like this has just been festering for a little bit too long the 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 wife probably just wants to help you know like wants to help and have fun like i i i'm pretty bad at backseat gaming myself i've gotten a lot better though or i used to be i'm like really good at playing games now with people where like, I, I played Portal 2 maybe, like, a year and a half ago with somebody. It was you. That was no, me. it wasn't. It couldn't have been you because you know how to play Portal 2. But I, I would play Portal, and I would just stand near what they're supposed to do. You know what I mean? And I'm, like, just standing there watching them try to solve the puzzle. And I just won't say anything until they ask me what to do. And then I'll just ping, like, over there. And then, like, just ping one thing and don't say anything. Just kind of let them work out. Well, Portal's a bad example because Portal's literally about solving puzzles. Together, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, but, like, it's it's similar to it's similar to that. Like, in Halo, I'll kind of just walk behind them and just let them play the game. And then I'll just pick up the slack. You know what I mean? Like, keep them from dying and, like, shooting whatever. Like, I, it's... There is a nuance to it where people don't really like to be treated like children. 
you know? You want, they want to be treated like adults. But at the same time, if you're bad at playing something, you're bringing the experience down for the person that's playing with you. You know what I mean? It, to some degree, it depends on what type of game it is. Like, if you're playing League, and it's like me and Philip are playing League, and I suck as ADC, I'm going to make his game worse. Specifically because I'm going to get pissed off and start screaming. Uh, but I'm going to do bad because I'm terrible at ADC. So people are just going to play circles around me. Um, that brings the that brings the the enjoyment levels down. But if you're playing like Rock Band or something, like something purely cooperative with no like no real uh, no real <laughs> failure state, yeah. then because most people play Rock Band without with no fail turned on, then it doesn't matter how bad you're playing unless the enjoyment's coming from listening to the music. But that's not what Rock Band's about because then you just listen to Spotify. Rock Band's about, like, being together, hitting the notes, being coordinated, using star power together, like, that kind of stuff. It's not really about getting high scores unless you're trying to be a beast. So, like, they're playing Gears of War. It's kind of probably... They're playing on normal, too. Well, she's playing on normal, because you can both be on different difficulties. difficulties. Yeah. It's so fucking good. So cool. But, um, it's, like, it's probably not the fact that she's doing bad. I would say she's just trying to improve her experience, but she's like kind of encroaching on her boundaries. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, well, I definitely think that the wife seems to be an asshole for just giving all the advice because I've also been that person that's been, I don't know, over over assisting with other gamers. And I do think it's better off to be hands off until they ask for help. But even when they do ask for help, like you need to make sure you're doing like proper like scaffolding if you're trying to teach them something but like you said like do just a ping or just suggest where to go but don't play the game for them because then they're not going to have fun but there is a point where if you're playing with someone and you don't want them to be anxious because they think that they're dragging the game down on you like you said like you don't want to cause them to have anxiety because you're going their speed even if you're just there to have fun yeah, and usually in those situations, you just got to be very persistent that you are enjoying the experience. Like, what I usually tell people is that my, I'm getting my enjoyment from watching you learn about this. You know what I mean? Like, I am living through you experiencing this for the first time because I can't experience this for the first time anymore. So this is where I'm getting fun now because I could play this, like, with my eyes closed probably, like Portal. I could beat yeah. Portal with my fucking eyes closed, but that's not the point. I, I want to watch somebody play it for the first time and be like, oh, my God, I can do that? Like, I didn't know I could, like, shoot up there. You know what I mean? Like, that's my favorite shit whenever I'm trying to, like, experience games with newer people. But that doesn't jive with, like, trying to help them. You know what I mean? Especially if you really want to, like, get them to, like, get them to understand things. I don't think the wife is necessarily an asshole. It's encroaching asshole territory because, like, apparently the wife kept asking her to stop. And it's hard to it's hard to like conceptualize that you're ruining the experience for somebody, but that kind of like fight probably needed to happen. Like it probably oh, escalated a little. To happen. Like I feel no, like it they, did. They went too I think, hard. I think it needed to happen, but I think it it might have went too far in like both directions, like a little too far. Like they didn't start screaming and hitting each other and shit, but like. That needed to happen so that now, when next time you start to explain something to your wife, they remember, I fucked the pronouns all up just then. The <laughs> wife is explaining something to the main anta- main protagonist here. Uh, they'll remember this time, whenever they got into a fight, about explaining stuff. Like, conflict should happen in relationships. Like, it, you... Having a relationship where there's absolutely no conflict all the time, that's really unhealthy because that means you're just sweeping shit under the rug and that's just going to turn in these little no, firecrackers no. into fucking nuclear bombs. I think that like they could have had like a less in conflict. This conflict is like too sharp, I think. Her coming back in and turning the system off, I think that's too far. She could have just walked back in and be like, hey, do you want me to keep playing with you or not? Type deal or whatever. And then if she's like, yeah, I want you to keep playing... They'd be like, all right, I'll play under like these conditions, like reestablish boundaries. I don't think she just had to scorch the earth and stop talking to each other for a day and a half or whatever. Well, that's the thing is that like I said that I think it goes a little too far both directions, but this is like. This is nothing (laughs) 
the, like turning the console off is nothing. Like I said, you can just quick resume it. It does <laughs> turning the console does nothing. You can unplug the console for like two minutes, and it'll it'll still have the game like queued up in the RAM. The the only way that some people learn about specific things is from embarrassment or from a confrontation. Like you can't live life without confrontation. That is one of the primary ways our eight brains learn things. You learn the stove is hot because you put your hand on the stove and it burned the shit out of you. Like, that's just how people learn shit. A lot of people have to learn that way. I had to learn that way. I had to ruin like a hundred game sessions before I realized, oh, people don't enjoy me explaining everything to them. It's not, it's fun for me. It's not fun for them. So, like, this person probably needed something similar to this. It probably went a little too far. We have the edit here. So let's read that. Uh, it says it doesn't add too much. Oh, it doesn't add anything. It says, "Oh I don't yeah, it's she just... plays the game by herself or any other game for that matter. It's our co-op game file playing by herself that I object to. I yeah. don't understand why she needs so much explanation, but here it is. That's really annoying. I would be frustrated as fuck if like I walked out of the room and then they just kept playing without me. I'm like, I mean, what? we kind of have this issue just doing the pod where like we're trying to play a game together." And it's like, all right, this is literally me and Nave save file on this one yeah. or whatever. Like, I need this, like, set this way or whatever. But there are, like, exceptions, like, when we played Morrowind or whatever, where I knew you didn't want to play it a lot of the time. So I just oh, did God, all terrible. the grunt work, like, basically beating the <laughs> whole game just to get the end so we can stab Dagon's heart and make him fall off the bridge or whatever that dumb shit was at the end. <laughs> that Looney Tune ass ending. Yeah, and then I'd poke my head in every now and then, and be you'd like, be like, all right, we're doing on? this, and I'm like, ugh, and I'm okay. like, don't worry, I can make you levitate, I prepared for this, and I would make <laughs> you fly, <laughs> because, like, I knew you wouldn't want to walk, or you would die on the way. Oh, my, and then, like, I would fall from levitating and die, and I'm like, Philip, I, you gotta don't come worry, back Nate, and get me. I crafted you rings of teleportation so you can fast travel now <laughs> but you have to not fuck up placing your teleport locations and you're like oh no i fucked it up <laughs> yeah god morrowind oh morrowind all right yeah so i think everyone like reddit it says stated everyone sucks here i think everyone sucks here too they went too far this could have been resolved with less fire uh i mean i guess like the closest thing i'd say is everyone sucks also because they both like the it's like why you shouldn't have played without her and then you because i know the only reason you did that is to spider and then you went in there and turned the console off and the only reason that she did that was to spider so it's like they're only doing things to hurt each other at this point even though it's like not a big deal none of this is a big deal but mm -hmm. like the conflict was necessary like the result of the conflict not as necessary but like the conflict was probably necessary because there were clear they were clear things that were not being understood by the the wife here. Yeah. Like either either the protagonist was not explaining herself as well as she's attempting to say she well, did in this post. I don't post. think anyone can explain themselves as well as they want to in any situation. Yeah. It's really easy when you're writing it down trying to explain to somebody cuz then you can get really granular and then you can like imagine the way that you thought things were happening, but you'll never be able to understand what the other person is interpreting from your words. So whenever someone is like, hey, stop giving me hints or whatever, like you don't know if they're just playing around or fucking around or like you don't know how serious they're being. Yeah. But this is a similar situation to like the lady going into that person's house and opening up the toy. It's like m most people know to not sit here and like over explain shit. Like, I'm over-explaining my thoughts on this fucking name by the asshole. But, like, just like oh, oh, most people know not to go and open boxes in somebody else's house. Definitely. So, this is just a lesson that this person needed to learn. All right. So, lessons learned. Here's a new one. Number... <laughs> <laughs> Was this 85? I linked it to you. This one's, this one's uh, a little bit shorter. Good. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know if I can read that name. All right, this is <laughs> Country Monkey Twelve. Uh, this is this feels like a burner account. Yep, only one post. All right, am I the asshole for not caring about my eleven-year-old son's accomplishments on video games? Lots of comments on this. <laughs> oh with my god, it's lots of replying. Like most kids, my eleven-year-old son enjoys video games. We keep our kids three in total pretty busy with extracurricular activities 
like sports, lessons, crafts, etc. So they don't have a lot of time dedicated to playing video games. We don't want them spending a large amount of time in front of a screen. My 11 year old is very is a very talented athlete for his age and seems to improve every day. Since I myself was an athlete, I love watching him play and having sports conversations with him. And no, I'm not that parent that expects him to turn pro and fulfill the dreams I had for myself. I'm just happy he loves to play. He just happens what? to be good at it. I am his biggest cheerleader for sure. He, here's what the problem is. These stupid video games. <laughs> Strong sorry. These stupid video games. He plays football, baseball, and basketball games, as well as things like Rocket League and Roblox. He brags about the plays he made, what the computer opponent did, and wants me to watch replay after replay after replay. I don't see these as accomplishments, so I have no enthusiasm towards what he's doing in a video game. I frankly do not care. If it were up to me, there would be no video games in my house. But there's two parents here with differing opinions on the matter, so compromises had to be made. One day, after countless, mom watched this, mom, I totally juked the defense, look, or something long <laughs> retelling of what happened in the game. He got upset, and I had little to no enthusiasm about those things. So I was honest with him and said, look, I'm not at all interested in what you do with your thumbs on a video game. I care about what you do in real life. If you score a touchdown in real life or hit a home run in real life, I will cheer my heart out and watch that video over and over again. If you get an A on a test or even a B with his more challenging subjects, I will super glue it to the fridge. But I just can't bring myself to do the same for a video game. He got more upset. My spouse was upset because he was upset and said I need to be more supportive in all of his interests. Am I the asshole for putting so much more energy and enthusiasm to his real world accomplishments and just not caring that much about video game accomplishments? My God. Nah. What is he? Nah, you're all right. For Duncan? No, he did a juke. Mom, I totally <laughs> juked in the face. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I ganked bot lane, Mom, and I got a double kill. You know, when I lived with my mom, uh, I lived with my mom for a while. Yeah. Uh, whenever I first moved to OKC, and I did unironically do that shit. Like I would be playing <laughs> League, and she'd be like in my bed because we both slept in the same room. We just had two beds, and the, we were living in a small little house with our aunt, my aunt, and my uncle, and so she'd be sitting there watching like Supernatural or something. And I gank Bali and get him, and I'm like, "Oh my fucking god!" And I turn around to her, and I'm like, "You see that fucking shit?" She can't see past me because I'm hunched over my fucking computer monitor. You yeah. see that shit, mom? And she's just like, "Yeah, that was pretty good." And she's just not paying attention at all. You know, it's funny because like I do this with Jana too, where I'll be like, <laughs> like it'll just be like I'll be like playing Halo or something like that, and I'll die in a stupid way where I'll miss an easy headshot and SWAT, and I'll get my head blown off i'm like oh my god fucking give me a bag of kittens do you believe this they gotta be it's gotta be you you gotta see what's happening here meanwhile she's like i don't know paying for our groceries on her phone or something <laughs> like, like actually taking care of our children and she's like yes dear that's great you know I'm like this is unbelievable and, I, and i'm 17 and, i'm 17 and 5 i'm carrying my team and we still lost and she's like yep I, I fucking know. god but that's the worst feeling dude <laughs> whenever you're doing really good and there's a guy that's zero and 17 on your fucking team and you're like what the fuck are you doing man what are you doing okay so when you look at it from that way it's almost like but we're also like adults yeah <laughs> i was like 22 whenever i was doing that to my mom like i understand nobody cares about anything i care about as much as i do like no yeah. one else is gonna care <laughs> Like, I talk about Japanese bullshit in, you know, my Japanese journal. I care about that more than anyone else forever. Like, there's no one that's ever going to care about my stuff more than me. I'm my own main character and all this stuff. But kids are different because whenever I see my kids, all three of them doing anything, it's like it's it's you maybe you, know, you just don't understand because you're not a parent but <laughs> i've seen molly catch the treat okay oh i'm God. very proud of her when she yeah. does it like when you see them do anything it it like gets me pumped arthur the other day he uh he pulled his own shirt off you know <laughs> and it was the first time he ever did it and i was like oh my god he did it like this is incredible <laughs> or, achievement unlocked yeah or emma came home and like yesterday she taught me this anime dance that apparently all the kids are doing at school you want to see it so. yeah all right, Philip's dancing. He's moving his arms, kind of like a praying mantis. Something's out. Oh, there was a shape. I can't tell what the shape was because I wasn't prepared for it. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for the shape, so the first fifty percent of the shape, I wasn't like tracking the the movement. Yeah, whatever. It's so stupid. But anyways, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm down. Teach me this dumb probably TikTok dance that these grade schoolers are doing on the playground. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm down for that stuff. Like, that stuff is great. But that's I the think... thing. That's in real life, Philip. Oh my god. No. Okay. Uh, I've talked about it before where my daughter challenged me to 1v1 in box fights on Fortnite and be my ass. And I was proud of her <laughs> like for beating me in Fortnite. It's like your, your kid dunks on you in basketball and you're like, I knew this day would come, you know, <laughs> and pull the gun out. <laughs> like I no. can like this. I always said I wasn't living past 30 and look at me now. I'm 30. I mean, so it snuck up on us. I don't know. Maybe it's different because we actually like video games and this person seems incredibly anti video game, but this is the well, stuff that they care about. What was that one? Am I the asshole? Like where they were like gluing like houses. You remember that? Oh yeah. It's my, my daughter's really in it was like one of our first assholes It's like my daughter's really into making miniatures. And, oh, that was it. Yeah. yeah. Cause I was looking for Warhammer related ones and I thought it was talking about Warhammer yeah. miniatures. <laughs> talking about like actual houses yeah. no it's like she had made like a mini european village with a greenhouse <laughs> and the mom was like i don't like meanwhile my other kids getting scholarships for basketball and my daughter is making tiny greenhouses i think the primary thing is that your the mom is just completely uninterested in video games and I don't think that you should beat yourself up over that people don't have to respect video games they don't <laughs> I hate these weirdos that are like video games are art and they should be in the they should be in a museum. And I think they are in museums. They are. Yeah. I mean, we've done that. We've done a whole episode about the value of video games as an art form. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that I believe video games are art. And <laughs> oh, I believe they're the guy. highest form of art. But I don't think that everyone needs to respect video games as much as I respect video games. I if this like it, the, you're right. It is different that it's the it's her kid. But. I mean, like, man, you, <laughs> how much do you care about TikTok really, Philip? Like, oh, whatever they're doing all. the TikTok. That's I don't, the thing. I don't have it installed. Like, I'm, I don't have a TikTok account or anything. Like, I've never used it. Like, the problem is that, like, it's like you see something weird on TikTok and, like, you can kind of conceptualize it. In video games, it's much harder to conceptualize, like, how much effort you have to put in to make the tiny pixels on the screen do the thing that you're doing, right? Madden, it's, it's like these sports games. It's like, okay, I understand he juked, but you have no idea how hard it is. It's not that hard to juke people in Madden. It's hard for an 11-year-old, I bet. But like, it's like you, you don't understand that it does take a lot of effort to get good at video games. And that's fine. At least the country bumpkin doesn't understand video games. That's, that, it's fine. No, no I mean, you know, you know my dad, you know, before yes. he died. Like he plays like the trumpet in the Christmas band and writes yeah. gardening articles and was a computer teacher. He's a pretty milk toast kind of guy. And he still listened whenever I explained the intricacies of League of Legends to him as I went through the no. details of Lane. I know how he listened because I would talk to him too and he'd be like, oh yeah? <laughs> like <laughs> like I, you would even no information was going into his he was like, oh yeah. Because yeah. I remember, we, like, he would be standing there, and we'd be playing Halo or something, and he'd be like, so how'd you, so how'd you, I don't know, and question, yeah. random question, and I'd just be, like, like trying to explain Halo, and he's <laughs> you explain, all right, so the Spartan program, Dr. Halsey, it began in, you know, 20... 20- oh my god, <laughs> dude, so you remember fucking Christmas when Don Cherry got me that book? I yeah. start, I read the first chapter, and then I forgot about it, and now I'm rereading it, like, before bed, and it is just, like, recapping ODST, and it is making me want to play ODST so fucking bad, dude, it's I think, like... I don't think we ever did an episode on ODST, did we? I... No, we that's did one a good question. On, we did it on the Firefight expansion in... The Master, in Master Chief, Chief Collection. Or yeah. something like that. Because they, they put the Firefight in there and shit, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. Well, we could always go back and do ODST just for fun. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to figure it out. All right, but I think she's an asshole. I think she should give a shit about her kids. How hard is it to give a shit? <laughs> well, that's what she's saying is she does give a shit, just not about this one thing. She doesn't oh, care about the no, fucking video games. It doesn't matter what the one thing is. What do you mean? You have to like everything your kids like? You have to like all of it? A lot of it, yeah. I think you should. I think You, you have like- three kids and you have to like all of their things. 
Well, no, you if, should. Please, let's just do arithmetic. You have three kids. Each one is into five things. That's fucking fifteen intricate little things you have to like be in, you have involved well, no, in knowledge. You, you can't need, just like okay, like forsake father, some of them. You don't need detailed like detailed knowledge. You just got to be like, good job, champ. You don't need to be like. Son, I could give a shit less about your score <laughs> ratio on fucking car soccer. Like, I'm just saying, care about your kids. Is that so hard? I well, so it's like she tried for a long time. She was like, okay, yeah, I don't. And the, she only said it because he asked why. He's like, why don't you look? What did she say? I've I've lost it. Yada yada yada. He got upset that I had little to no enthusiasm about these things, so I was honest. Look, I'm not all that interested in what you do with your thumbs in a video game. Like, she said it passive-aggressively, but it's also a kid probably annoying her. Like, mommy, mommy, mom, look mom. This, yeah. Like, look, mom, mommy, look. So she's probably annoyed with him whenever she said this. Another thing is that, like, he's going to vaguely remember this, but it's also, like, it seems like the dad is interested in the games. So can't you just, like, push it off on Dad? Like, you look at him play Madden. I don't give I mean, a shit about yeah, Madden. I guess you can do that. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh. I refuse to be the bad guy here. This just No, seems, I mean, like, yeah, I just seems, imagine that with my kids or whatever. It's like, you know, what if my daughter's like, oh, you know, I'm really into ice skating or something like that. I'm like, ice skating sucks. I don't want to <laughs> hear about it. And then she like shows like a, a sweet triple axle backflip paramore misery business. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And then shows it to like, go show it to my wife, Jana. And then goes shows it to mom. And mom's like, this is incredible. Thank you so much for sharing this with me or whatever. Like the next thing I know, my kid's not going to bring anything to me. He's like, dad's a fucking dill hole. I don't want to show. I don't anything. know if that's the way. Well, it's like, think like, not that like, this imagine it's like, like a real stick in the look mud. at, look at this makeup, dad. And you're just like, uh, that's pretty. Like, I don't have any concept. I don't know how to conceptualize makeup. I, mean, I don't know. And I'm but, like, I don't understand it. But, you know, when she puts it on, I'm like, oh, it looks great. Good job, champ. <laughs> but what I if it doesn't? It. What if it doesn't look great? You how would you know? Even when it doesn't. Oh, yeah, you're right. That was a stupid question. Well, I don't know. As long as, long as she shows you ice skating in real life and not in some dumb video game. Oh, my God. It's All fun. right, whatever. Skip. I think we have time for one more. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna handpick this one. She's uh, she's a bit of an asshole. I'm just, I, <laughs> <laughs> she's a bit of an asshole. She could have been nicer about this. Let's see. Do you want another kid one or do you want something else? I'm oh. done with kids. Okay, I'm this one of, is not so kid related. Kids. This one looks funny. Number sixty. Here you go. Read that. <clears throat> All right. So it's am I the asshole for firing? <laughs> <laughs> am i the asshole for firing someone because they are a furry artist burner by a, a comer <laughs> a comer six seven nine what is that echo mirror i don't know mm. all right this is a good palate cleanser just for how stupid it is <laughs> oh i'm so excited because we've been all serious right. for the last couple it feels that way i own a small business and hired a young woman last year She's been a great addition to our team and actually has helped us improve substantially. I honestly never thought twice about her. She seems completely normal. I never knew she enjoys she enjoyed drawing, but I suppose the only thing off about her was that she wasn't open about showing us her work. That's a red flag. Oh, I should have seen this as a red flag. <laughs> no, is that a red flag? <laughs> that Come is on. a red flag. I don't... <laughs> I, well, you're right. Maybe it's like how I treat the, this podcast, where I don't Just show don't anybody. Tell anyone I don't about tell it. anyone. And no about wonder it. our numbers are suffering. I'm not. Do you, I, with all the complaining I do about the mail, I'm not showing any <laughs> postal work. There, it's bad enough that Jacob listens. He, he's a mailman. <laughs> he'll, he'll be bitching about the mail, and I every single time our episode comes out, like maybe four hours later, Jacob sends me a snap. That's like, dude, that shit you said about the fucking machines not sorting shit today. That was real. Yeah. I'm just like, sure was. So you told me sucked. that the mailman's union could be our market. No, it may be. I don't know. I'm mad at them, too. Hey, where are we at? Second paragraph. All right. Anyway, recently I received an email informing me of her inappropriate online presence. Oh, my God. She got canceled on the Internet. So yeah, someone reported her or I guess someone's coming after. Her. Wow. It was an online page full of not safe for work furry art. I honestly did not believe it at first. After finding her art Instagram, I managed to dig up a few selfies from two years ago, confirming that it was indeed her. Of course, 
I had to take action at this point. No, did you? Did he? Did he, did he need to did take he action? Take <laughs> While I understand she kept her online account separated, I cannot deny that this behavior is unacceptable. It's very important that I don't allow that sort of stuff to be associated with my business. I don't want to be given a bad name. Yesterday morning, I called her to my office and informed her that she will not be working with us any longer. She asked why, and I explained my reasoning, which I assumed she would understand. Instead, she went off about how she doesn't deserve this and how I'm an asshole for firing her for this. And I wouldn't have known if I didn't go dig up her identity. I told her anyone could have done that. And if they found her and found out that she works for us, it could mean bad things for my business. Long story short, she ended up storming out, clearly not happy about what just went down. Am I the asshole? Now, okay. I have, I have a question. A, I have I have, I, okay, you, you go right. first. We might have the same question. So we need to identify that this is bad for his business. What do you think his business Dude, is? I, he has to be running like a pet shelter or something. Dude, that was my thought too. Like, is he, <laughs> okay, it's either pets or something child related. Either way, if this worker finds out, like, if he's like a vet clinic or something like that, he's like, hey, you can't. <laughs> fucking each other <laughs> on the <laughs> internet posted online like you can't you can't do that oh my goodness it's gotta be that it's is, is it ever i don't think it's i don't think he commented on anything ah uh, yeah I, I don't see any repost for him hold on scroll and scroll and scroll, 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 scroll. uh yeah, okay him. he did he did one reply or one what? comment what do you say read uh, the thread he said oh there let me see if I can link it. Okay, no, he posted a top level comment and then people replied to it or whatever as like a response. He says, I completely understand the need for a personal life, but there is unfortunately a difference between indulging in your own hobbies at home and letting them be shown in public, especially when these hobbies are sexual in nature. <laughs> okay, so this guy probably runs like a paper company <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> like, uh, no, it's like imagine if he runs like a, like a, um, I don't know, like, like a daycare or something like that. There's a similar like a, story where the up? there was a woman, uh, a teacher that, or I think she was a substitute teacher, and she got fired because she had an OnlyFans, and the kids found out about it. Well, yeah, I I think that's reasonable. Yeah, see, that's the thing is that a lot of people are like, "No, go get your bag, girl, slay," and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know about that one, folks. <laughs> yeah. Like may I like that's a harder to decipher than you would think initially. It's like the kids found out about it is the thing, right? Like that's very hard. That's strange. Okay, and so this, it's like we don't know what he replied, but he never mentioned what type of work he worked for. Probably did not get bombarded with a the same way that she got canceled by somebody. Effective well, yeah, canceling, like, it worked. What like then it makes me wonder what's like the next step? Does she go public? And burn it all down or something like that. Be like, oh, I got fired I bet she from uh, country farm animals veterinary service because of my, <laughs> here's my and links are art. Right. Oh my god, I that I would I would have seen that. I guarantee you, I would have seen that if that went down like that. It would have popped up in my. No, that's right. my orbit. So she kept it under wraps. Then uh, follow up. Someone apparently ratted her out. Who could yeah. it be? A spurned lover, maybe? A competing what? artist trying to get her taken down? Uh, I bet it was another just coworker she... who who didn't like her or something. Well, no, it was an email. Yeah, so unless like it was he... an anonymous email from a coworker. Maybe I'm sure it could have been an anonymous email or just what? pretend it's like, "Hey, my name is uh, Jessica Robinson, and I just want you to know something about your employee." What I think is probably she said something on the internet that made the art or and or furry community a little angry and somebody find somebody doxed her and then somebody sent this shit to her employer that's pretty that's pretty run of the mill for the internet actually I think that's like what if there's like playbook. an anti like an anti furry hunter or something like that and i mean there's that too but that would hunting fall in people the... down and trying to dox <laughs> them or something like that <laughs> that would fall in the category of spurned internet person. No, I mean, well, they're not in the community. They're from outside the community trying to take people out like a, some kind of hitman. Yeah, the anti-furry. It's um, furry hitman. It's a agent furry seven. No, well, so, well. <sighs> you, you, my agent furry seven. Yeah, I get it. Okay, that's fine. No, I mean, it's, it's good it, no, it's funny. <laughs> Stop. Whatever. You're like that mom. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, the good job. 
<laughs> no, I see what you did there, sweetie. All right, so somebody sniped her out, or could this just be a cover up for the uh, the owner of the, the boss business. snooping? Yeah, like he found it anyways, just snooping on him. And a way to cover his own ass, he like, I got an anonymous email. Yeah, you're right. That's just like the anonymous death threats that people seem to always get and and whenever they say stupid shit on the internet. Yeah, well, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to, because unless they specifically, like, provided evidence, like, you know, like you're not going to believe it, unless, like, but he did his own searching, apparently. Yeah, afterwards, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of here. Why is digging in shit? Yeah, um, it looks like she's eating something. And she's freaking out. It might have been her, the anti-furry. <laughs> All right, but is the work owner uh, an asshole for firing him? I don't, not really. Because this I mean, could get you kicked out of the Air Force. Yeah, like, I, there is a lot of shit that could get me kicked out of the mailman thing. Like, But is it right? It, it kind of... It wouldn't feel right. It wouldn't feel right to me or to this person. It doesn't to, feel right to like to they're whenever being you're censored. Yeah, but it's like the thing is, is that like if if you work in a place that's like super buttoned up, like you probably shouldn't be doing outrageous shit on the internet. That's just like that's just it. That's just the real world. And we can try to pretend we live in a utopia where everyone can do anything they want. We can all have fucking six shooting revolvers on our fucking hips and walk into the bank dressed up as the fucking green goblin and like have a totally <laughs> normal transaction. That's my that's what my vision of the utopia is. Yeah, I want to be able <laughs> but, to leave um, all my savings just in a pile of cash just in my car and uh, you know, windows rolled down and no one's going to take it. Yeah, I like to have 60, 63 hentai games on my Steam public <laughs> public games list and not be made fun of for it. That's what I want. That's my utopia. Everyone's going to make um, fun of you. Yeah, unfortunately. I make fun um, of Arthur whenever his pants fall down and he's just walking. Do you push <laughs> like, him? Push no, him over? No, <laughs> he, can't, he can't save himself. You know what's funny is like there's research behind children that get like more rough play at being better coordinated as they get older. Like as far That's as true. babies, so like you do knock them over and like wrestle them and stuff. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's true. What is it? What is that guy's name? Piaget, Jean Piaget, or is he a psychologist, child psychologist? Well, that would fall under psychology. You talking about Paget? Paget? Yeah, yeah, Paget. Oh God! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> no, no, no! Not that. That's up there with Inwa. That's pretty close. <laughs> it's too close. It's a little too close. Really easy to to edit. <laughs> edit that word all right so is this uh worker an asshole is the boss an asshole kind of yeah i'm leaning more towards asshole but it's like if they're in a if they're in a state where you can fire someone for whatever reason you want then it's like that's kind of like the territory you live in and you got to be aware of that kind of shit unfortunately yeah. And some people just don't. It's like the same thing about like having tattoos and not being able to get a good job. It's like tattoos really don't mean anything about the character of the person with them, unless it's a swastika or something. <laughs> like I, you know, maybe <laughs> probably, maybe probably don't hire that person. But it's like there are some places that just don't hire people with tattoos, and it just doesn't make any sense. And eventually, those old people that think that way are going to be dead, and then we get the jobs that those old people got. But then by that time, we're going to be racist against TikTok <laughs> dances or something. No. So it doesn't even matter. Yeah, we're going to become the new uh, right-wingers as we grow up. Yeah, that was something that... Uh, fuck, what was I listening to? I've been listening to a lot of random shit. But, like, they were talking about how the... Oh, it, it, <clears throat> it was Final Fantasy fourteen. The people playing on Xbox, the word filters are really insane right now for just oh. on the Xbox side. So, like, if you put, like... Uh, I was stuck over there. The W A S or the W A S S will get censored because of ass. Like was stuck, yeah. and like it's all kinds of shit like that. And they were talking about like they're of course they're doing. There's all these words that people are finding, like the word night. It's like last night I was doing something and oh, night is censored. Night. Yeah, yeah, because of the N I G in the yeah, middle. It's a and so one. it's like yeah, well it's like you. It's like the I, I, you you. <laughs> it's like kid putting kid gloves on, but at the same time. The people who haven't been on Xbox 360, Halo 3 lobbies, or Modern Warfare 2 lobbies, they don't understand how out of control shit gets when a bunch of kids just are unfiltered the whole fucking the whole way there. 
but it's also like the more that you try and crack down on stuff like that because there's a ton of words that are just told that don't even seem like bad that i think somebody got banned on x like an actual ban on xbox a community ban uh because they typed in that they were looking for a free company and the looking for groups for final fantasy 14 which a free company apparently is the name what they call guilds or whatever but i guess in some in some countries free company means prostitute or something it's like slang uh-huh. for prostitute so they got banned cuz they the xbox thought it was looking for prostitution or whatever and it's like there's all of these things if you like get rid of like everything scorched earth style people are just going to make up new words for the bad things you're trying to that's the reason why slang exists is cuz people are trying to refer to things that are un that are uncouth in public in a way that won't get them ostracized right yeah, what am i, I talking about that i'm just reiterating the thing i was listening to at this point but uh, you know a lot of times when you go off it always comes back to fucking was it 1943 or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> 1984. 1984. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I own the book. It's it's a, one of the shelves where I just don't remember the number. 1943. Yeah. Yep. Literally 1984. <laughs> yeah. like, you're doing Final thought fantasy. crimes. You're saying the wrong words where they can be heard. Yeah. Something, something animals more, more, uh, what is it? Talking about animal animal farm? farm? Yeah. yeah I'm trying to quote I animal like farm, animal but I forgot farm. of it much better than 1984 like if we're going like preferred works by uh, really or well well yeah. animal farm is cool because it's a interesting allegory so you got your brain juices flowing the whole time it's, it's very got short the pigs, it's got the horse it's great yeah so you get to fill in your own thing but it's also like 1984 i just think is so is very super compelling but i don't like i don't like 1984 as much as i like island by uh huxley or even brave new world for that matter i like brave new world a lot more too because it's just so much more fantastical, but yeah. I don't know. Brave New World was fun, kind of. It was fun for a moment, and then we got less fun. <laughs> <laughs> it got progressively less fun. Yeah, yeah, the longer it went on, the less fun there was, actually. Just that, like L.A. Noir. <laughs> yeah, things were quite serious, actually, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Book review. Book review. Can't wait for that uh, Patreon episode <laughs> where we review uh, The Halo books. book. What the uh, hell was that book? The Communist Manifesto. Oh, yeah. One of those. All right. Uh, we've My been going cough. for almost two hours. Nave, are we going to finally play Smite this week? Jana yeah, really wants to play with us. That sounds fun. Easter weekend threw a big old wrench and everything, and I lost all motivation for playing video games that weren't Final Fantasy. So, Yeah, I get that. And with that, thanks for joining us this week, co-op partners. Maybe next time we can all... I don't know, draw not safe for work furry art together and get fired. <laughs> or uh, neglect our children? If something like that. I don't know. We talked about a lot of <laughs> stuff this week. Yeah, my head hurts.